All right, David Harry here. So, have you ever asked yourself this question? Just what is the SLC performance like on the internal storage of my Mac? And just how bad can it really get once that SLC cache has been depleted? Well, the short answer is, it's quite short and it gets really terrible. Right, so what I'm going to do in this video is just to show you the effects of the SLC cache being filled up and depleted. And let's just see what the speed goes like once that happens. So what I've got here is a MacBook Pro, which is an M4 Max. Let me just show you here. So as we can see, M4 Max MacBook Pro. And then over here is the internal storage. Let me just show you what's going on here. So this is a one terabyte variation of the internal storage. And I've got 777 gigabytes free. Okay. And then I've got this external Thunderbolt 5 uh, storage here, which consists of the newly released Acasus TB501 Pro, which is an 80 gigabits per second Thunderbolt 5 USB 4 Gen version 2 thing and inside of that I've got a Western Digital SN850X which is the 4 terabyte version now for anybody interested I'm just going to be doing a video soon about how to put one of these together and also run some speed tests on it and it is an absolutely fantastic fast external drive okay so the first thing that I'm going to do then is just to give ourselves a bit of a rough idea as to what the speeds are on both these storage devices the Mac internal and then this external SSD so what I'll do I've selected my home folder there so first thing to test is the max internal storage so let's go for that as you can see here over 6,000 megabytes per second for the write and over 5,000 megabytes per second for the read I'll just let I'll let this go through a couple of times we'll just get a bit of a rough average as you can see it's definitely over 6,000 for the write and it's definitely over 5,000 for the read now if I just just flip over onto the external storage here let me just open that and let's start that as we will see here what's that that's about 5900 write and about 5800 read again i'll let it go through a couple of times so 5900 that's it's nearly 6000 now and the read is still over 5800 and very surprisingly here the read speed on the external thunderbolt drive is actually faster than the read speed of the internal storage <laughs> oh what a bummer for apple okay so let's stop that we've seen enough there we've got a really rough idea of what's going on okay so what i'm going to do here is to open up the storage there the external storage and i'm going to open up activity monitor now i'm not going to time this because i'm not doing any kind of like manual bit rate calculations because what i'm going to do here is just to show you what happens with the slc cache once it is depleted now i'm going to move this 500 gig folder to the desktop but first of all let me just show you it so it is 500,000 megabytes in size or 500 gigabytes. It also consists of 1,563 items as well, which range from very small files to very large files and tons of them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is drop this folder onto the desktop and let's keep an eye on the graph here on Activity Monitor and also, or more importantly maybe, is to have a look at the data written number here. So let me just pop this over okay so immediately look at that wow over six gigabytes per second which is absolutely phenomenal that is amazing oh wait a minute it's dropping a little bit it's gonna it's gonna vary a little bit anyway that's just the nature of the data being moved and as we will see here as well with the graph that's going to be quite steady and stuff now i'm just going to carry on talking for a little bit because it's not going to take like you know hours before i hit the point where the slc cache goes through the window and we start seeing what happens but you know it's going to be extremely disappointing <laughs> i'm just going to give you oh there we go it's starting to get disappointing look at that it's dropped down to 2.5 gigabyte oh it's dropped down to less than a gigabyte now it's gone to a gigabyte uh, yeah as we can see that is super super disappointing now it's it's popped back up but i guarantee it's going to drop back down again so this is going to fluctuate there we go it's dropped right down so this is going to fluctuate a bit now that big bump up there that we just seen i don't think we're going to see that again we might do 
but uh, I doubt that'll happen again. But look, it, it's going below a, a you know it's going below a gigabyte now. So it, it, yeah, it, it's just super disappointing, right? So I'm just going to talk a little bit more about my disappointment here, and I've already done this in another video, which has probably gone up at the same time as this one, where I was testing to see what happens once like the max internal storage starts getting full, and like you know what the speeds are like. And once again, that is super disappointing as well. But I'm basically just going to reiterate the same point that I made in the other video and it's this we are paying way more than any other type of storage when we buy a Mac and more so when you start bumping up the spec of your Mac so all of these Apple silicons where like you've got no option but to like you know buy the storage that you think you will ever need as far as the internal storage is concerned because you can't add any more internally we're paying absolute ton for that stuff and basically it is the singular most expensive SSD storage on the planet so basically my bottom line here is this if we're paying so much money for these internal SSDs why are they not the best ones in the world and why are they like you know a lot more deficient compared to something which costs maybe a quarter or even like more like less than that of the price you know as a for instance this Western Digital that I'm using here is like you know most people might go oh, that's an expensive SSD it's nowhere near the price of a, an Apple internal storage drive do you know what I mean and also and I made this point as well in the other video that I've just recently done if you were to take one of these SN850 X's and put them inside of a Windows PC and use them as a boot drive because don't forget it is being actually throttled a bit even though we're on Thunderbolt 5 Thunderbolt 5 itself still cannot let this SSD run at its maximum speeds you know so if you put one of these Western Digitals as a for instance inside of a Windows machine you're going to see better speeds than what we're going to see on the Max it's ridiculous ridiculous anyway is this going to get done soon what it is i'm just trying to pad out for time here because i'm going to put this folder back to the internal storage sorry back to the external storage and just show you how how much better this external ssd is okay so that's finally done but as we could see there that was super disappointing now what i'm going to do is let me just uh, i'll retitle the folder that's inside the external there now what I'm going to do is just, in fact, let's, let's just do it. I'm dragging back the 500 gig folder back to the internal storage. Now, as we're going to see here, that number doesn't look as impressive as what the Mac did when it was like writing the folder, but that was only at the start of the actual transfer, okay? In fact, it's gonna reach up to about six gigabytes per second, something like that, but it will fluctuate quite a bit. However, what we are going to see here is that this is not going to drop down and this is the important thing it is not going to deplete its slc cache with this 500 gigabyte folder now i'm not going to sit here all the way through this one what i'm going to do is just speed through towards the end i'll come back in just towards the end of this data dump and we will have seen it just won't like drop down crazy like the apple's internal storage does Okay, I'm just going to come back in here now, and as we can see, that maintained a really high bit rate all the way through the transfer of that 500 gigabyte folder, and it was just absolutely decimating what the Apple's internal storage was doing. Anyways, I've already mouthed off about my total disappointment with the Max internal storage during the section of the video where we were copying the folder to it, so I'm not going to rehash the whole point again, but I'd be very interested to know you know what other people think of these results out there and you know are other people in agreement with me here that like you know this is just apple taking the absolute piss out of people with the amount of money that they charge for their storage and i think the only people that are going to disagree with me are some kind of like hardened mac fanboys who are never going to listen to anything bad about anything to do with mac or apple products anyways i'm going to shut my big fat mouth now but for anybody who's interested in this external drive that i've been using don't forget there's a video coming up soon with that and once again this is the acasus tb501 pro which is an 80 gigabits per second
second Thunderbolt 5 enclosure paired up with the Western Digital SN850X 4 terabyte variation. If you've liked the video, please do give us a thumbs up. A sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome. I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.